Hey everyone, today I'm unboxing, installing, and taking a first look at the Viva 10 watt diode laser. We'll check out what comes in the box, get it set up, and see how it performs right out of the gate. Let's jump in. Hey y'all, I just wanted to jump in here and say honestly, putting this thing together wasn't bad at all. The instructions, they're pretty clear, pretty straightforward, and as long as you take your time and don't rush it, you'll have it up and running in no time without any trouble. Honestly, I just laid everything out at first, followed each step, and before I knew it, it was ready to go. Uh, the bags that the screws come in are each labeled for each step, so that really helps. So you'll see step one, your bag is labeled as step one. So if you just follow that, follow the instructions as you go, this thing is going to be super easy for you. Uh, it's definitely not as intimidating as it might look at first glance, so don't worry. Just go ahead and take your time and you'll be uh, installed ready to go in no time. Alright, so you can see right here I'm actually installing a drive screw that kind of controls both belts at the same time. So you can see right here that inserts into that hole. Um, I don't show it on camera, but right here I'm actually tightening a little Allen key that I don't show it on the other side. So it's, it's over there, don't forget, don't miss that. I don't show it on camera, but there is another Allen key on both sides that you have to tighten down, so don't miss that. And basically right here what I'm doing is I'm lowering there's a, it's a clamp, I'm just dropping it down one notch uh, so that the laser actually is a little bit lower to the, to the surface of the, the plate that you're, the material that you're using. So that's all I'm doing right here, I'm just lowering it down. Hey y'all, if you're liking this video so far, do me a favor, tap the like button and subscribe to the channel. I've got plenty more projects, unboxing, and tool tests coming your way.
There you go, and just like that, it's all put together. Now let's get it connected and set up in Lightburn so we can start testing this thing out. All right, everybody, so we went ahead and we have the laser, the Vivor laser, all assembled, which is actually pretty easy to do. If you just follow the instructions, you follow those little packages, uh, it should probably take you about 20, 30 minutes tops to get this thing put together, and you'll be good to go, ready to start lasering. Now, what we need to do is we need to make sure uh, that we get this machine installed in Lightburn. You can see I have... Um, a different machine here opened up right now we got the LEF machine but we're gonna go ahead and get this one put in here so what we want to do is let's go down here to devices and I think what we're gonna do is we're well, first we're gonna go ahead and turn on the machine and get that and turned on so if you hear a little fan in the background that is the machine for the uh, that's the Vivor 400 by 400 on so hopefully you won't hear that fan too much all right, let's go ahead and put Find My Laser, and then we'll hit Next. Scanning for Devices, and let's see what happens. All right, so it did pick up, there we go. We did pick up the um, machine here. I'm not sure what 10 millimeter by 10 millimeter means, but let's go ahead and I guess we're just gonna, I like to use the WCH serial, so we're gonna go ahead and do that one. Let's add, add device, and the axis length is not 10 by 10 millimeters. It is 400 by 400, and we are gonna name this Vivor. Okay, what would you like to call it? Let's call it Vivor uh, 4040. Uh, that way I know what I'm looking at. And we're gonna come over here and hit next, and yes, we want to have the auto home, and we also want front left. So let's go ahead and hit next, and hit finish. All right, so now you can see down here I have the Vivor uh, 4040. Let's go ahead and hit OK. And what I want to do is we're going to come down here, and we're going to hit WCBH serial. And now it is auto homing. Perfect. All right, let's go ahead, and what I always like to do is let's go ahead and close Lightburn and go back over to Lightburn. Let's open it up, and let's see if it auto-homes right off the bat. Perfect. So the laser did auto-home, and we are good to go. Now what we need to do is we need to say the fire. So what we need to make sure that we do is come over here to Lightburn, and then we're going to go to... Uh, device settings, I believe it's device settings. Yep, device settings. And then up right here, you're going to see enable laser fire button. Let's go and enable that. We'll hit OK. And here's the other thing. So my S value max is wrong. This is another very, very important. I'm going to say this is probably one of the most important things in the video. What we need to do is if you see that S value max there is 255, watch this. I'm going to leave it like that right now. But what we need to do is then come over here to machine settings and you're gonna see that the max spindle is a thousand. Those numbers need to match. If I don't have those settings matched, I'm not gonna get that full potential power out of this laser. So what we wanna do is come over here, we're gonna change this to 1000, hit okay, and then come back over here, go to machine settings, make sure that it's a thousand. All right, okay. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to go to light burn, quit light burn, you have to reset and close light burn every time. Would you like to save? Uh, no, we don't want to save that. Let's come back over here, open up Lightburn. Let's go ahead to device settings and right here 1000. So we're good. So that means that you're going to get a hundred percent of the power every single time no matter what. Um, enable fire button and then laser on when framing and we should be good to go. All right, guys, now that we went ahead and got this uh, set up in Lightburn, let's go ahead and do a test engrave and see how it does.
right, guys, that is it. That is the video. I hope you like this video. I just wanted to do something a little bit different in this video and just dive right in with the build and get right to it. Super easy to assemble. This Vivor for the price is absolutely amazing. Honestly, probably took me like 20 to 30 minutes to put together and I had this thing installed in Lightburn. It recognized it right off the bat and boom, I was in business laser engraving. I did a couple tests that I wanted to show you. This right here is 3000 millimeters a minute. It really burnt its way through, which is really amazing. Pretty good speed at that. But I went to their website and it said that it can engrave at 10,000 millimeters a minute, which I went ahead and I did the same exact piece of wood right here. This is the 3000 and right here, here is the 10,000. Now I messed up at the bottom. I forgot to change that. So I ended up changing it after the fact, but you can see right here, it's 10,000 millimeters a minute, same piece of wood and check out the results. Absolutely amazing. This actually took roughly 40, 35 to 40 minutes at 3000 millimeters a minute. I think about 35 minutes where this took like 13 minutes, way faster. But if you wanted to get a darker engrave, you just kind of have to slow down your machine. Now I do recommend if you're doing different pieces of wood that you do these kind of tests on that piece of wood. For example, if you're doing maple, do a test like this on maple. If you're using a kachia wood, like for cutting boards or something like that, buy a piece of scrap and then do a bunch of different tests on that piece of wood so that you can see the results that you're gonna get. That way when you actually are doing your project, you're gonna have the correct results that you want. The one thing I wanted to do was test out the acrylic. They come with these cool little keychains, and I thought, what a cool little idea to go ahead and just put QR codes on those little keychains because I did it on a piece of wood and I wanted to do it on this because I think it'll last a little bit longer. This was done at 50% power at 8,000 millimeters a minute and they only took like maybe a couple minutes a piece. But my centering is a little off. I don't know if you can see that right there. There it is. Check that out. Look how good that turned out. So there's my Instagram side. Let's click on it. And here's the Facebook. And who knew that you can stretch out and conform the size of the QR code? It's not a perfectly perfect square. It's like one and a half inches by almost three quarters of an inch. But there it is right there. There's the Facebook page. All right, guys, that is it. I just want to thank Vivor for sending me this 10 watt diode. Now, they do have different options. They do have a 20 watt version of this. It is a little bit more money, of course, but they have a 10 watt and a 5 watt. So a 5, 10, and a 15 watt version. So you have the option of which power that you want. 20 watt laser is definitely going to be a lot more powerful. It's going to get jobs done a lot faster and a lot more power to cut through. So if you're looking for that, or if you're looking for to do more engraving and detail work, I highly recommend the 10 watt because the 10 watt is going to give you a little bit finer of a laser beam. So you're going to have a little bit more detail. A lot more videos coming up. As a matter of fact, we're going to do a video on this next week. Uh, I have a couple things that I need to cut out for my daughters that they were requesting. So I thought this machine might be perfect for that project. All right, guys, that is it. That is the video. Thanks so much for watching. And until that next video, make sure y'all do one thing. Stay awesome. See you in the next one. Bye.